Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to tell you about my brand new Ernie Ball music man, James Valentine. Um, I just got this uh, a couple, actually yesterday. Uh, so this is obviously not a review of, you know, I've gigged with it for years. I'm not even in a band, to be perfectly honest, but um, I, I love I love guitars. You can see I gotta have my balls gratuitous, gratuitous, uh, I have my balls exposed in the background. Um, so I'd just like to talk a little bit about this. Um, this was announced at this most recent Winter Nam, uh, 2016, uh, so in January. And basically, as soon as I saw it, I was like, who the f is James Valentine? Um, and I think a lot of people are probably thinking that. Uh, a music man has a tendency to uh, go with... Uh, musicians that are not terribly well known except within like certain communities for instance you ask any person on the street who john petrucci is they'll have no idea but you ask uh you know dedicated guitarists who john petrucci is they'll tell you in a, in a heartbeat who he is um kind of same with a uh, with um uh, annie whatever her name is from saint vincent and their their guitar uh the albert lee and um you know steve lugather uh, the mass public doesn't know who these particular players is but it doesn't matter because these players sell guitars and James Valentine is absolutely no different once I learned that he was the guy from Maroon 5 that was that was it because I've always loved uh, James Valentine's playing his a uh, little short short choppy almost ska reggae kind of um, you know just using the the higher strings um, just the little attacks and his um, he's very very musical and so uh, when I saw the video which I'll post a link uh, to below. It's just the, uh, the Ernie Ball Music Man uh, video for James Valentine's guitar. Um, I, I knew that I had to have it because it looks super cool. Um, obviously, got the roasted neck, um, have a contrast with the body and kind of like the, the, the Super Strat kind of a, I don't know, SG-ish type shape. Um, it just, it's it's a, it, it caught my eye and I knew I had to have it. So I called Dylan at Sweetwater and I said, hey, um, give me one of these guitars. <laughs> I knew it was going to be a long ass time because I got a Majesty when they first came out. Um, so you order it and you forget about it. And then six months, eight months later, you get a call saying, hey, your guitar is here. So that's kind of how it worked out. Um, so, yeah, anyway, that's uh, that's kind of a little backstory on this. But uh, so let, let's talk about it. This is a six string, obviously, guitar. It's it's hardtail, so any of you that are used to playing like the John Petrucci or the Lukather or the um, you know anything with the Floyd or anything like that is hardtail. Um, so this is my first hardtail Music Man. Um, as you can see, the bridge looks very nice. Let's see if I can get a good shot. It's a uh, it's very flush with the body. Um, String through design. Uh, what you may find interesting is like the, the holes, the ferrules in the back are all straight in a line. And uh, a lot of times on string through uh, guitar designs, uh, I don't have one that I can uh, demonstrate for you. But a lot of times on string through designs, like they'll be they'll be staggered. They'll be in like a kind of diagonal to kind of compensate for um, uh, lower strings needing a longer distance. But ultimately, it's the bridge which decides uh, the the effective length of the string. So that's uh imagine that's why they did it. So, moving on. Um, locking tuners. These are an absolute must. Absolute must on every single guitar I buy now. Um, the only exception to that would be I have uh, John Petrucci's Ibanez um, Picasso, the, the JPM model, and it does not have locking tuners. Um, but other than that, they're, they're a necessity. They're fantastic. They make string changes a breeze. And these tuners, they're all installed very, very well. They're nice and tight. Um, the, the obviously tuning stability is impeccable with these things. Um, one thing uh, what's I find interesting is what Ernie Ball is doing now is you can see on the back of that, they got the California Bear, which uh, they didn't used to have. Let's see what uh, used to have. Yeah, so used to have made in San Luis Obispo, California on the back. Um, frankly, I think the bear is cooler. It's 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 very it's very California, 
And it still says California Heritage since 1974 with the little, you know, obviously California flag. Uh, I spent about 10 years in California, so I've got uh, a piece of my hearts out there. So anyway, so yes, locking tuners. Um, you can see that the headstock is flat and the brake angle is kind of what keeps the uh, tension on the strings right there. Um, also, can I just point out while we're here, look at that freaking flame on that neck right there. Like, that is incredible. Look at that. That is freaking gorgeous. Oh, man. And, you know, the, the flame is one of those things that it really just takes the right lighting to see it. Um, because when I first opened the case, no, 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 I take it back. When I was looking at the pictures that Sweetwater sent me, I was like, okay, it's, it's a roasted maple neck. It looks okay. Um, I wasn't terribly thrilled about it, but it was a chance to get my hands on this exact uh, guitar. This one comes in maroon. It comes in natural ash. It comes in black. It, or, and these are all translucent colors. And it comes in this, uh, what they call, uh, trans, trans buttermilk. Um, Sorry, my little my little dog's trying to get in on this. Um, so I knew I knew I wanted the trans buttermilk. Actually, they're all they all look so nice. So it was really hard. I had to flip a five sided coin to try and uh, decide which one I wanted the most. Um, so anyway, moving on. Uh, we have a twenty nineteen twenty fifteen seventeen nineteen twenty twenty two frets stainless steel. Uh, I believe they're medium jumbo. I'm never I'm never good at like judging size of these uh, size of frets, but. Also, I'm not sure what the radius is. I think it's probably um, probably 10 inches, something like that. Uh, it came strung up with 11 gauge strings, which is way thicker than I'm used to using. Uh, my Albert Lee back there has uh, 10s on it, and my uh, all my Petrucci's have 9s, because uh, most of the time I'm a shredder. Um, but this this is incredible, and it's perfect. For the, you can really dig in, and the guitar responds wonderfully to digging in. Like The harder you dig in, the louder it gets. Um, so, uh, we got a five bolt neck joint right there. We have, um, we have our battery cavity. We have our control cavity. Um, you know, actually one thing that I'm going to test while we are here is, uh, actually the other thing I should point out, the j control jack on it, very nice. Very, very nice. Like a really nice, satisfying click. Um, one, you know, one of the things with uh, my Petrucci guitars is if you leave it plugged in, you are bound to be disappointed when you go to play it the next day or a day later because the, the battery has died. And I was wondering if this is the same way because, uh, yep, this is the same way. Ugh, I need to tune that bad boy. Anyway, um, so that's, that settles that. The guitar does not work without the battery uh, being in it. So uh, it is, even though these are technically passive pickups, it's got a 20 dB, dB boost by pushing pushing on that to pop it out. Um, I'm sorry, up to, up to 20. And then it also has a coil splitter for the humbucker up front. And yeah, so why don't we just go over the electronics a little bit. So it's got, yeah, the humbucker, it's got a single coil back here. It's got the splitter for that one and a three-way position switch. Uh, so obviously position one, you have your humbucker. Position two, you have both of them. Position three, you have just that one. Throw it in the middle, um, split the coils, and you have a really nice kind of, uh, kind of sharp, but still kind of throaty, um, uh, really nice looking, uh, really nice sounding uh, tone. Let's see what else. Obviously, all music mans, music man. Uh, you can't really see it. Uh, yeah, right there above the the neck pickup has the um, the truss rod wheel. Which, if you've had to like, you know, if you've had other guitars, and you had to take the little thingy off here and you know get your truss rod down in there, and you kind of like don't get it at the right angle, and it's all a pain in the ass. Um, you won't ever have to deal with that with this. You can basically take anything that'll fit in the little holes on the wheel and tweak it as needed. 
Um, but you probably won't need to tweak it because uh, these roasted necks are absolutely uh, rock solid. Uh, you may need to tweak it if you switch um, uh, switch gauges, strings, or whatever, but just just slightly. Uh, so the fret work is impeccable on this. Not a single fret. I can run my entire hand up and down the neck. Uh, not too fast because that'll look suspicious. Um, run my hand up and down the neck and there are no snags, no nothing. It, it feels just silky smooth. Um, if you've ever played on one of Music Man's uh, gunstock, waxed oil, you know, whatever, whatever the process they use for their neck. Man, I cannot get over that flame. That flame looks just fucking brilliant. Let's see if I can get, a, get another good angle of that. Yeah. Okay. So... Fretwork is amazing. So I will say the only thing that I would, my only complaint about this when I got it is that, and this is obviously very, very nitpicky, but I'll see if I can demonstrate it in the, uh, in the camera here. So, and it may just, it may, you can, you might just say that it's just the angle that I'm giving you. Um, but basically the base side of the nut which is Ernie, Ball, Ernie Ball's uh, compensated nut, by the way. Uh, keeps, keeps intonation excellent throughout uh, the range of the strings. Uh, the base side of the nut is just ever so slightly protruding out. Just, just ever so slightly. And I wouldn't have thought twice about it until I felt the other side, and the other side is absolutely flush. Um, you might you might notice a, a tiny tiny raise, uh, but that's only because of the lacquer. Um, one second. Yeah. So uh, I I know I know my reviews tend to be rambling, uh, but I, I don't I don't get paid to do this, so I don't I don't give a crap if uh, you know it's professional quality and the lighting is you know whatever. Um, my main thing is to just uh, just get my pure raw thoughts about the guitar. Um, feel wise, I, I got, so a little bit of backstory in that too. Um, I ordered my Albert Lee kind of just on a whim. Uh, I had the, I'd actually just got done watching a, um, a video about Mike Einziger of, uh, Incubus. And he was, he was saying how, um, he was he became obsessed with the Albert Lee guitar uh, that it, it basically became his his go to and it just looks so cool and I love Incubus's music so just on a whim on a whim I ordered the uh, the Albert Lee guitar and within five minutes of playing it it was my guitar it was just amazing I love positions two and four uh, which basically uses one coil from each of the humbucker on, on each of them depending on which one you have it at. And it just felt amazing. The uh, tongue oil or the uh, the, the wax neck, uh, rosewood neck, obviously, is just fantastic. And I've kind of felt exactly the same way about the James Valentine. Um, so that's basically going to be my go-to guitar for a while. Uh, I, I've already I've already started playing different stuff on it than I would normally play, and I don't know if it's because of the the vibe of the guitar or the um, I, I I don't know. Maybe the different tension on the strings. Maybe the the different tones that I'm getting from from the uh, different configuration of pickups that I'm used to using. Um, I've been playing ever since I got my JP13 and JP15. I've been playing that pretty much uh, nonstop. With I've only taken occasional dips into the Albert Lee pool um, every now and again. But I've been mainly playing my JPs, and it's it's just it's just a different animal when when you go from uh, humbuckers to single coils to some sort of little combination uh, between just you know the JP has the middle position where you can split the coils and then you get a really nice uh, sparkly kind of uh, kind of 80s ballad uh, guitar and then if you mix that with uh, the acoustic pickup it just just clean heaven it's awesome um, so. Yeah, I've just I've just been writing differently. It feels really, really good. You're not going to hear any playing examples of it because it, you don't own my amp. I mean, maybe you do. It's a Mesa Boogie Mark IV combo. You you don't necessarily have my exact setup. Um, 
this this Yeti mic is not going to pick up everything perfectly, so it's pointless for me to play. So all I'm doing is talking about this. Um, feel free to downvote uh, this video if you like. Uh, so yes, James Valentine guitar. They recommended.